Okay. Number one, so the person has three questions. What do you think about manifestation? Believing your thoughts is powerful, of course. I can see a cause and effect. But are you the manifester? Alas, can it become a form of the person to try and feel better than what is your go on this? Like to me, the most important part is coming back to presence and forgetting about this. You know, are you the manifester or aren't you a manifester? Like come back to presence, come back to who you are, to the I am, to beingness, to aliveness, to the consciousness, whatever, to God, whatever word works for you. And, you know, and begin to let that speak, let presence speak, rather than letting your mind speak or your ideas speak or this idea of manifestation and whether it's real. I don't know how this life works. It's magical. Like I had some far out coincidences happen this week, I can tell you. I said something one day and then exactly that thing manifested the next day and I was just like gobsmacked. This also happened to the lady that helps me with everything I do, um, who I'm so eternally grateful for. She, um, yeah, I just have one lady that works for me. Some of you might know her. And yeah, she's just such an amazing support. And um, yeah, we, I think it happened to both of us. Like we had a conversation and then the next day, somebody sent us an email about that conversation, which in the, I think she's worked for me now for eight years, something like this. And in that time, um, you know, we never had an email like that before. It was so weird. We speak about it the day before and boom. And then there was a few others where, um, yeah, speak it. Yeah, I had to say, yeah, this is private to speak about it, yeah. So life is really ma magical and it's like, just give up, you know, come back to presence and then let it do its magic. And presence isn't a personal thing. Presence isn't something that you're like, okay, I've got to manifest this or I've got to manifest that. It's like coming back to every moment and letting the stillness speak. That is stillness speaking. That's what you do. You just go around. Oh, that makes me want to burp now. Sorry, I just sucked in too much air <laughs> in my being an um, expression of stillness. Oh my, what happened there? I sometimes wonder if the American audience listen because of my English accent. If, you, if you're not English or American, you might not know this, but the Americans really love the English accent. Like, it's not so much now, but when I was younger, I used to go to America, it'd be like, Oh my God, are you from England? No way. Your accent is to die for. I'm sorry, I'm really bastardizing the American accent. Yes, <clears throat> so that was me uh, being a old posh and just, <clears throat> I swallowed too much air, too much of my cucumber sandwich. Yeah. The English really tend to love the Irish accent. We, it's funny, isn't it? Like the Irish accent is like really, oh, to an English ear. Funny, isn't it? But I, I kind of love like lots of accents. Like I love the different ways um, that um, different countries speak English. I love it. Like the way the French speak English or the German speak English, like the Italian is like, it's like just brilliant. You know, never try to get rid of your accent in any way because there's some idea of what English should sound like. It's divine, you know? So suddenly hearing an Italian person speaking English and that fusion between 
first language Italian and then second language English. It's just so divine. Wow, like a song. But I have to say, the Irish And I have to say, the person that wrote this question that's just between me and them, I love the way they speak English. And the other day, they they said to me that it wasn't very good, and I love the way they see, speak English. I've always thought it was immaculate, as if it was their first language. It's so impressive, people having second languages. Yeah, it really is. I'm in awe. Number two. If you could hit me with a hammer to wake me up and could put it in words, what would that they be? Would you be a lot more harsh to me? Are you sparing me? Yeah, I don't want to beat you beat you up. Oh my god, that was so hard not to say your name. Stillness. Do not say the name. Do not. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I just don't want to, um, to beat you up, you know, we have this idea sometimes of like beating the ego, beating up, but the ego is so beautiful, you're so beautiful in all your quirks and all your complications. Yeah, it's so beautiful. And um, you don't want to beat you up. You're not doing anything wrong. You know, it's, it's just at some point, you know, grace will decide that what's most important in that experience is not thinking, is not what I can get from this, but it will see the most important thing as stillness as what you truly are and at that point that will come forward and flourish and the person will go more into the background and then that reduces the seeking or disperse, disperses the seeking and can change the character and make the character better but I don't want to beat you up you know humans are only assholes because they're suffering even like the worst type I mean okay there's some that is because of sociopaths or psychopaths, I forget which one, but you know, people are only assholes because they're suffering. And um, presence and stillness loves that suffering, not in a way of like carry on suffering and being an agony, in a way of like absolute compassion. It embraces it without any judgment and that is the feeling that comes up when I'm speaking to you that there's no judgment on the character or the illusion who wants to beat who up stillness doesn't want to beat you up it doesn't it wants to love you it just does love you it doesn't even want it just does It seems what I want, number three, it seems what I want to play out my conditioning, seeking and finding proof. I don't deserve the love of God or any other human being for that matter. Sometimes this conditioning breaks down and it seems too inst instantly allow my true nature to shine through. Just by listening and dancing to music, watching art or a kid play. Also, therapy seems to point out a field beyond interpretation. My question is, isn't all interpretation one of lack? To reject this, 
It must be not good enough. Others must be enemy and self must be lacking. Does this seem mean lifting of this condition have anything to do with the process of waking up? Or is me trying to create the path towards this? Well, your thoughts are always going to create paths towards things. Always. Creating, creating, creating. Um, and um, I think it's great to settle down the person. That seems the pre precursor for most awakenings. That's what happened for me. You know, and the person's in deep suffering, there can be just a big pop like Eckhart Tolle, but most of the time it calms down, and as it calms down, then something else begins to shine through, like you speak of. So, you know, try to come to the I am, to beingness, and to let that guide you. Like you can make it, I suppose, a bit of a practice to come to this moment and see what is desired beyond the seeking. But, um, yeah, even the seeking is perfect. What does this moment want? Right now. Yeah, thank you for the questions. You know who you are. <laughs>